The iGel is a novel and innovative supraglottic airway management device made of a medical grade thermoplastic elastomer which is soft, gel-like and transparent. It took over five years of development to perfect a non-inflatable anatomical seal of the pharyngeal, laryngeal and perilaryngeal structures that would reduce compression trauma. A supraglottic airway without an inflatable cuff has several potential advantages including easier insertion, minimal risk of tissue compression and stability after insertion. iGel is a latex-free single patient use device that has a gastric channel to reduce the risk of aspiration. Key components and their function. The soft non-inflatable gel-like cuff matches the shape and softness of the laryngeal and perilaryngeal framework. It helps to provide easy and rapid insertion and reduces the potential for post-operative trauma. An integral gastric channel is provided to reduce the risk of aspiration and allow for passing of a nasogastric tube. The buccal cavity stabilizer eliminates the potential for rotation and aids insertion. An epiglottis blocker helps to prevent the epiglottis from downfolding or obstructing the distal opening of the airway. The 15mm connector extends inside the airway tube far enough to provide an integral bite block. Pre-insertion preparation iGel is supplied in a sterile pouch enclosed in a protective cradle. This innovative packaging is colour-coded for size and designed to ensure the device is maintained in the correct flexion prior to use. It also acts as a base for lubrication. Select the appropriate size eye gel according to patient weight. For patients between 30 and 60 kg, a size 3 should be selected. For patients between 50 and 90 kg, a size 4 should be selected. And for patients above 90 kg, a size 5 should be selected. When selecting size, it should be remembered that the eye gel cuff does look smaller than the corresponding size of many traditional supraglottic airways with an inflatable cuff. Ensuring that you conform to local policy for hygiene, open the eye gel package and on a flat surface take out the protective cradle containing the device. In the final minute of pre-oxygenation, Remove the eye gel and transfer it to the palm of the same hand that is holding the protective cradle, supporting the device between the thumb and index finger. Place a small bolus of water-based lubricant, such as KY jelly, onto the middle of the smooth surface of the cradle in preparation for lubrication. Do not use silicon-based lubricants. Grasp the eye gel with the opposite free hand along the integral bite block and lubricate the back, sides and front of the cuff with a thin layer of lubricant. This process may be repeated if lubrication is not adequate. But after lubrication has been completed, check that no bolus of lubricant remains in the bowl of the cuff or elsewhere on the device. Avoid touching the cuff of the device with your hands. Place the eye gel back into the cradle in preparation for insertion. Do not place the device onto the pillow or chest of the patient and always use the protective cradle provided. Do not use unsterilised gauze to help in lubricating the device. Do not apply lubricant too long before insertion and always ensure dentures or plates are removed from the mouth before attempting insertion. The eye gel must always be separated from the cradle prior to use. The protective cradle is not an introducer and must never be inserted into the patient's mouth. Insertion technique. A proficient user can achieve insertion in less than five seconds. Remove the eye gel from the protective cradle and grasp the lubricated eye gel firmly along the integral bite block. Position the device so that the eye gel cuff outlet is facing towards the chin of the patient. 
The patient should be in the sniffing the morning air position, with head extended and neck flexed. The chin should be gently pressed down before proceeding to insert. Introduce the leading soft tip into the mouth of the patient in a direction towards the hard palate. Glide the device downwards and backwards along the hard palate with a continuous but gentle push until a definitive resistance is felt. Do not apply excessive force on the device during insertion. It is not necessary to insert fingers or thumbs into the patient's mouth during the process of insertion. If there is early resistance during insertion, a jaw thrust or insertion with deep rotation is recommended. When inserted to a definitive resistance, the tip of the eye gel should be located into the upper esophageal opening and the cuff should be located against the laryngeal framework. The incisors should be resting on the integral bite block. Since eye gel is shorter than many other supraglottic airways, it is important to remember that after correct insertion, it is likely that less of the airway tube will be visible. The eye gel has a horizontal line on the integral bite block to indicate the optimal position of the teeth but the teeth may rest safely anywhere on the integral bite block. The eye gel should then be taped down maxilla to maxilla. When inserting the eye gel, it should be remembered that partial resistance and then a feeling of give way may sometimes be felt before the end point resistance is met. This is due to the passage of the bowl of the eye gel through the foreshell pillars. This is quite normal and consistent with correct insertion, but in such cases, insertion needs to continue until definitive resistance is felt. Let's look at some eye gel insertions in real patients. Note the sniffing the morning air position and the gentle press down on the chin. See how there is no need for fingers to be inserted in the mouth. There is never a need to apply excessive force or to repeatedly push down on the device once definitive resistance has been felt. How to use the gastric channel. If required, a nasogastric tube can be inserted down the gastric channel of the eye gel. For a quick and efficient insertion, it is important that the nasogastric tube and the gastric channel of the eye gel have been adequately lubricated before insertion is attempted. The ideal way to achieve this is to place a small bolus of lubricant over the proximal end of the gastric channel. The nasogastric tube should then be inserted a short way down the channel and moved in and out to prime it before completing insertion. The maximum size of nasogastric tube that can be inserted down the eye gel is size 12 French gauge for a size 3 and 4 eye gel and a size 14 French gauge for a size 5. In summary, eye gel is a simple and effective alternative to traditional supraglottic airway devices. Eye gel has been designed to eliminate the need for an inflatable cuff and create a superior anatomical seal mirrored to the pharyngolaryngeal structures. It includes a gastric channel to reduce the risk of aspiration and is very easy and rapid to insert. iGel offers natural airway management.